All right, so we are back and fresh off the YouTube versus TikTok press conference debacle, brawl for all, WWE hardcore match right in the middle of an Urban Outfitters. We got past the train wreck that was the press conference and we're back to some sparring and boxing footage. And today we're taking a look at one half of the main event of the YouTube versus TikTok card. Now we've already seen Bryce Hall and I mean, he was aggressive, he was moving forward, but when he was throwing, nothing was landing. So he was throwing roid rage rights and I skip leg day lefts, but... <laughs> It just didn't look like a guy that knew what he was doing or would have the time to figure it out by the time this fight happened. But today we are taking a look at McBroom's most wanted. I mean, Malibu's most wanted. I mean, Austin McBroom, as he has released some sparring and boxing footage for the Bryce Hall fight. You guys have said he looks good. I haven't seen this yet, so we're gonna get into it. But before we do, guys, remember, I will be doing a watch party live on June 6th for the other YouTuber in a boxing event coming up. Low Hands Logan versus Grandpa Floyd. I'll be live at around 5 or 6 p.m. PST. Make sure you guys are following me on Twitter to keep up with that stuff, at Wade Plim. I do these watch parties as a thank you to you guys for all your support on this channel. I love interacting with you. I love talking with you. So I can't wait to see you on June 6th. With that being said, Let's get into the breakdown. All right, so first impressions. Austin looks like he's at the same gym that DDG spars and trains at, so probably the same coaches. Austin hits a right hand and then starts to do what I can only assume is a salsa, cha-cha, slide, mariachi mix. I know he's moving his hands to keep them warm, you know, for like the next combination, but I, I hope that's not something he implements in the fight because it's just wasted movement and wasted time. The jab has a little bit of the Taylor Holder syndrome, right? Where he doesn't quite turn his jab over. It's almost that hammer fist jab. So what I mean when I say guys like him and Taylor are throwing hammer fists, I would like to see them go full extension jab, boom, turn that over. But instead, what we get is kind of the, the hyper extending elbow. So it's bam, bam. Save that elbow, protect that elbow, and really get the spark on the end of that shot. You land a jab, you land in right hand, at the end of that punch, it's really got the snap, the twist, and the power behind it that you're looking for. You're one, diminishing whatever reach you have, and two, not being able to, to really stick that jab in someone's face and use it as a weapon. Let's watch the right hand here, double jab. I don't like the hands hanging out here at his chest as well. Again, this is gonna be a problem we see with a lot of the YouTubers. This is, is entirely too low, right? This is loading up, throwing a baseball pitch for a right hand. That's what that is. And, and it makes sense that Austin would do it. He's played other sports. And a lot of the other sports, think football, think baseball, you throw a, a ball from that position. You throw from here, right? And then you just kind of over the top. The double jab and the pull right hand. What Another thing I don't really like that I see from Austin is him throwing shots with his mouth open. Boom, boom, ha. This right here. I'm not sure what that is. Like, I, I know he's breathing this is not what you want to see. One, he looks like a salamander out of water. <laughs> and two, he's basically saying, hey Bryce, if I miss my right hand, aim for my chin, unload an absolute haymaker, and remove half of my jaw from my face, please. All right, so from that, we see Austin's an orthodox fighter, carries his hands a little low, which again is going to be 90% of this card as they don't really understand the importance of hands by the eyebrows just yet. They will when they get hit, and then the natural reaction will be... Until that, they're not gonna understand what that means to keep those hands high and why they should do it. So that's Austin on the mids, but let's take a look at some of his sparring footage and see what happens again when there's another person, an able-bodied human in front of him. Let's take a look. All right, so we have uh, Austin running up a hill in what I assume is either the Hollywood Hills or Calabasas because those guys have fucking money. Okay, he's going, he's going, he's pumping those arms. Not too bad, okay. Something I'm always curious about is why is Austin's voice sound like he's in fast forward when he talks? I'm gonna fast forward as I'm talking for the next couple seconds, and it sounds like how Austin talks. So yeah, when Austin talks, it sounds like you hit the fast forward button on the YouTube video, and it sounds like he's a little chipmunk, like Alvin and the Chipmunks. That's how it sounds because he's talking really fast, or it's got that high pitch to it. I don't understand it. So yeah, that's how. <laughs> Maybe it's just me, and I know I have a weird voice when I talk, but he sounds like he's in fast forward always. Okay, framing out, hitting the bag. Yeah, oh, shout out Fousey's in the building. Yeah, Austin's definitely standing southpaw, so let's talk about this. So, from what I know, Austin is obviously right-handed. We saw him training orthodox in the last little pad session that he did before this one. So, this is what I think. When you're boxing as a right-handed person and you have to throw out your left hand, your opposite hand, the one you're not comfortable with, it's going to be a little awkward. It's not going to land the same. It's not going to feel the same. So, if you were to switch southpaw, you can pop that right hand out far quicker. You can. It's really snappy. You have more control over it. And the same thing with your lead hook. It's boom, right there. And it's because you're more comfortable throwing your right hand. But I see what he's doing. He's highlighting his power hand as his lead hand 
and being able to switch stances is not a bad idea when you're fighting a guy that is just learning how to box in general, not necessarily preparing to fight a guy that can switch stances. It's a feather in your cap if you can do it effectively. If not, it'll gas you out. See, that jab looks far more crisp. Hands are far higher. Out of Southpaw, again, he just feels more comfortable right here. And just like anybody else who is just starting to fight, box, whatever, you're gonna feel more comfortable with your right hand and putting it forward is just you saying, I have a crappy jab out of Orthodox. So I'm gonna go the other way. Even the lead hook looks better there, right? Jab, hands come back. Again, this is good. And then the lead hook. Looks good. Again, I would really advise you to close that mouth, Austin. Even just the technique work on the back here, right? Nice hook to the body. But again, the backhand, look at the differences. Watch him throw the lead hook, right? Boom, everything on point. Answering the telephone. Coming across horizontally. Watch him throw the rear hook now. Hand down. Again, kind of just shoving it into the bag versus really snapping it over. The difference is, out of southpaw, He's better with his lead hand. He's crabby with his backhand. My man over here looking like Bryce Hall. Show him. All right. Bryce Hall basically looks like uh, a blurred out 1970s porno movie from what I gather. That, that's what Bryce Hall apparently looks like. Because I can't see shit. Some actual sparring footage. They break. Austin out of orthodox. Again, hands stupid low. Big right hand kind of lunges in. Obviously, uh, a parry or some sort of roll and an uppercut is there to land. Covering up. All right, so now he's southpaw. So he is definitely, I mean, listen, Austin's definitely going to switch stances in this fight. I wouldn't be surprised if Austin comes out orthodox, maybe for half of a round, and then switches. Woo, okay. Straight left hand, beautiful shot. Uh, it doesn't land flush, but I just am, am impressed that he can throw the straight left hand that, that effectively. That's not a bad straight left. Turns it over, straight down the pipe. Boom, slides out of the way. I like it, nice recognition. This is some rhythm moving his hands, right? This, while well, he's trying to get into range, kinda up and down, really fainting out. All that stuff's good. I just didn't like the little, you know, <laughs> the little shimmy he was doing. This I'm okay with. This is why I say these guys aren't sparring anybody of any kind of substance. That man threw a Popeye 1950s cartoon. Well, come here, I'm gonna swing. <laughs> There's no technique or ability thrown in that punch. Far overreaching, over lunging. Austin obviously makes a good read. He pulls. Kind of a little bit of a high shoulder roll here. He pulls back. I'm assuming the, the straight left is going to come off of this or maybe a check right hook. Yep. Boom, boom. Straight left and the check right hook on the chin. That's an accurate shot, man. You know, this sparring partner is not very good at all. He's a complete novice, but those are good shots. Shut the fuck up. Tell me I didn't just see what I just saw. <laughs> so Austin McBroom just throws out a Canelo feint. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Canelo, once he has a guy compromised or once he is starting to feel himself, once he's starting to take over rounds, Canelo likes to throw this, this lead uppercut, but he feints his backhand. So he's here, boom, boom. Austin just tries to replicate a Canelo backhand feint to the lead uppercut. Watch, the, it's so disrespectful. So he's here, he throws it straight up high, right? And, and that's fine. He's just getting a reaction out of this guy, right? It doesn't matter where you throw it, here, here. It's just to get a reaction. Here's the problem. Austin could have pulled his fucking 1990s Phoenix Sun shorts down and took a fat shit in this ring. And this guy would have stood here like this because Austin's brutalized him for the entirety of this sparring session. This dude has zero offense to speak of. So this feint is just extra. And then the uppercut underneath. I can't even see if it lands, to be honest. Let's see there. Yeah, it kind of lands. Boom, straight left hand down the pipe. Listen, Austin is more technical to a point, right? You don't want to see this, this uh, hook that he's about to throw coming from his hip way back here, right? You want to kind of keep those hooks right there in front. But I'm not ready to say that Austin's a pure southpaw, but those straight left hands, the two he threw, looked far better than the straight right hands he threw. But again, that's a nice straight left hand. It just took him too long on the lead hook because he winded it up from Tallahassee, Florida and tried to let it go in New York. Again, not a lot of defensive responsibility because he doesn't feel threatened. We said it about basically every YouTube fighter. If you train like this, it's how you're going to fight even when there is some resistance, right? And when he does get clipped in the chin, we're going to see from both guys, from all the guys on this card, what happens 
when you get tagged for throwing wild like this because I have a feeling it's going to be a card full of rock'em sock'em robots. I, I really do. I think guys are going to go in there and brawl. Technique is going to fly out the window in about two seconds. All right, so there you have it. Austin McBroom sparring and boxing footage. What I gather from that is that Austin, again, he's more comfortable with his lead hand forward because he hasn't ever worked on his jab out of orthodox, so it feels awkward. It doesn't feel natural. Anytime you start a sport, you're going to start with whatever you feel the most comfortable with. So Austin's experiencing that. Having said that, Austin does have a pretty decent straight left hand. But, and no disrespect to the guy he's sparring, he could have just put a heavy bag on a Segway and had it remote controlled and got the same result. Like, the guy that was in there with him was offering no resistance. But as I look at this fight, I see a better athlete in Austin. I see him picking up the sport a little faster than Bryce is. And maybe off camera, Bryce is making gains we're not seeing. And no, I'm not talking about the Sarms-filled bicep pumps that he shows in the weight room. I'm not talking about those. I mean in the boxing ring. So will Austin McBroom be able to snap back on Bryce Hall? And no, I'm not talking about the hat that Bryce wears to cover that mountain range he calls a forehead. I mean in the ring. Will Austin McBroom take his talents down to South Beach, turn Bryce Hall into Bryce Fall, and come back with a W? I guess we'll find out.